This is the Sesto Senso 3, a robotic focus motor made by the Italian company Prima Luce Lab. What makes it interesting is that even though it is fully motorized, you can still grab the focus knob by hand and move it and it remembers exactly where you left it. That is because inside there's a physical encoder that keeps track of the position at all times. So even if you adjust the focus manually, the system still knows where it's at. That means if you're switching between visual observing and imaging, you can go back and forth without removing anything or recalibrating focus. Today we're going to take a closer look at what's new in this third generation of the Sesto Sensu, especially in this specific version designed for Schmidt Cassegrain telescopes. I'll tell you the story of how I got it, how I installed it on my C8 Edge HD, and what it was like to use it under the stars. Let's get right into it. My name is Luz and you're watching the Space Koala. So. This is the Sesto Senso, and it isn't exactly new. The company released the first generation several years ago, and it quickly became one of those little red boxes that you start seeing on all kinds of telescopes, from refractors to Newtonians, typically. I actually had one of those early models myself. It was on my Coronado solar telescope, and it, it worked just fine. A compact motor that could transform a regular focuser into a robotic one. However, being a solar telescope, I never actually used any of the autofocus features. It was just a way to focus manually remotely. Over the years, Prima Luce came out with a few new versions of the focus motor, upgrading the motor and providing more integration with their ecosystem. And now we've arrived at generation three. And this time they didn't just update the electronics, but they actually created three whole new versions each designed for a specific type of focusing system. There's still the standard Sesto Senso 3, which is what most people will think of when they hear the words focus motor. That one attaches to usual external focusers like those um, Crayford or Rec and Pinion types, the ones that you would normally find on refractors and Newtonians. Then there's the Sesto Senso 3 SC, which is the one I have right here. It is designed specifically for schmidt cassegrain telescopes and others that focus by moving the primary mirror instead of having an external draw tube. And finally, there's also the Sesto Senso 3 LS, which is made for telephoto lenses. If you're one of those people who shoot the night sky with a camera lens, then that's the one aimed at you. It's definitely an interesting move rather than trying to make one universal focuser like other companies are doing, Prima Luce decided to adapt the system to the mechanics of each type of telescope and each type of different focuser. Now back to the Sesto Senso 3 SC. I didn't actually plan to review this one at first. Prima Luce Lab had sent it to another Swiss astro YouTuber to try out, um, to Sasha from the channel View Into Space, to test on his C925 Edge HD telescope, but it turned out that this model doesn't quite fit that particular telescope. The body of the 925 Edge has the larger 3 inch rear opening and there simply isn't enough clearance for the mounting system. So Sasha texted me and said, hey maybe you can try it out on your C8 Edge HD, it should fit that one perfectly. And you definitely don't have to ask me twice to try a new Astro toy, so that's exactly what I did. We actually did a whole collab video which has a better overview of the entire range of focusers and Sasha also demonstrated the other models in detail, so I will link that one below and be sure to check it out if you're interested in the standard Sesto Senso model. But today we're only focusing on the Sesto Senso 3 SC mounted on my Edge HD 8 now this model is built around a new mounting system called a direct pulley clamp or DPC for short. That is what connects the motor to the telescope's internal focusing knob and this part is completely backlash free. You just attach it directly to the focuser shaft and from that point on you can freely move the mirror in or out with an extremely fine precision. Inside there's a high resolution motor with 2 million steps of movement. That's 
far more than you'll ever actually use, but it gives the system incredible control, especially for autofocus routines. Like the other models, it includes USB-C and Wi-Fi connectivity, so you can control it from your computer or you can just leave the laptop aside and connect directly with your phone or tablet using their virtual handpad, a simple web interface that runs in any browser. Of course, it also comes with an ASCOM driver, so it shows up in pretty much any astrophotography software, Nina, Sequence Generator Pro, MaxMDL, whatever you use. And if you happen to use Prima Luce's own Play software or their Eagle computer, it integrates perfectly with those as well. Installing the focuser on the C8 Edge HD was very easy since this version is made specifically for telescopes with internal focusers. You don't need any custom brackets or modifications, just remove the rubbery cover from the tube's focuser shaft, wrap the provided adapter ring, it is this hard, slightly foamy material around it, tighten a couple of screws and then slide the motor housing on top. The whole process took me maybe five minutes. Once it's attached and powered on, the first thing to do is calibration. And this is a unique feature on this model right here. This is this feature where the motor automatically runs the focuser all the way in and then all the way out. Measuring the total travel range, it takes about three minutes. And after that, you're working with absolute focus positions. Of course, only a smart part of that is the usable focusing range but now every position is a precise number. You'll only need to do this once because the encoder keeps track of where you are, even if you turn the knob by hand. So once everything was installed and calibrated, I started using it for a few imaging sessions with the Edge HD 8. Full transparency, at first I did run into some issues. So my first unit was actually faulty, so I had to get it exchanged. And then once I received this one, which was working fine, I also found a couple of software issues, but um, I reached out to the company and they were super responsive and they immediately fixed those. And so with the updated driver that they sent me, I have been running it super reliably ever since. Now that it's working properly, it's been very smooth. It did take me some trial and error to find the correct settings for Nina's autofocus routine, but once I did, everything is running as it should. For my specific setup, I have found that the autofocus step size of 150 with four initial offset steps worked really well for my use case. 150 sounds like a lot, but the motor moves in tiny steps. So this way the curve is very clean and the focus lands consistently every time. Almost every time the R squared value for the fit was about 0.8. And in most cases it was actually above 0.9. So that was very reliable. One thing to keep in mind though when evaluating these numbers is of course that this is just a motor and not an actual focuser itself. So the precision you get ultimately will depend on your telescope's internal focusing mechanism. If your mirror has some play or backlash or flop, that will still be there. The Sesto Senso doesn't magically remove that. This is why lots of people opt for external focusers for their SCTs. While this may be the best way, I have found that I've been able to work just as well using the internal focuser, mounting an external focus motor on it for all of my imaging applications. So how has the experience been? On the positive side, um, it just works. Once it's set up and calibrated, it remembers its position, connects reliably and delivers focus every time. The Wi-Fi option could be handy for a lot of people if you just wanna do quick visual sessions or planetary imaging without setting up the whole shebang. And the ability to still turn the focus knob by hand without losing sync is the main selling point in my opinion. Now, on the flip side, it is of course not the fault of the motor, but it is something to keep in mind. As previously mentioned, if your SAT presents issues with shifting or mirror flop, or if you would like to use filter offsets instead of autofocusing every time, this will not be the solution for you, and you are better off opting for an external focuser instead. And then there is the power connector. It is a 5.5 by 2.5 millimeter plug instead of the, I think, much more common 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter one, which means that most of your existing cables may not fit. They do include a cigarette lighter style 12 volt power lead, but I really wish they just used the 
more standard connector that every other accessory already uses. Um, for me, this was actually a non-issue um, because, as I mentioned, I had one of these focusers already in the past. So I already had an adapter at home and it was as easy as that to use my existing cable with the different plug. Even if you don't have one of these adapters, they cost a few bucks a piece. Um, it's not an issue, but it is something to keep in mind before you put on the focuser, make your first trip under dark skies and find out you're not actually able to power it. Otherwise, there are no complaints. The build quality is solid. It integrates well with other Prima Luce gear as well as third-party products. Um, so the experience has been positive. The Sesto Senso 3 SC costs around $289. Yes, there are cheaper focus motors out there, but also more expensive ones. And this one actually offers something unique with the encoder and the possibility of manual control. Therefore, this could be a great option to consider for those who go back and forth between imaging and visual astronomy. You also do get quite a few control and connection options, which is always nice, though I would most likely just stick to using it via the encoded USB-C cable. Overall, once the initial setup was done and the technical quirks ironed out, it was an enjoyable experience to image with this focuser. Honestly, you mostly just forget about it because Nina is taking care of the autofocus routine for you. So I ended up just using it as normal and taking a close-up photo of the Malat 15 cluster within the Heart Nebula. This was also the first time that I used my 2.5 nanometer Antlia narrowband filters, which gave me amazing contrast, but of course it also meant that I had to use longer exposures for the autofocus routine too, which is not necessarily a bad thing, especially if seeing conditions are not the best. So yes, a few design choices like the power plug could still be better, but overall the Sesto Senso 3SC feels like a well thought out product. And for its price, it's an easy recommendation if you're using an SCT and want a reliable way to automate focus while still being able to use your tube for visual purposes. I will leave a link below if you want to read more about the focuser. For those of you out there who do both visual and photography, would you consider switching to this design so that you would be able to focus manually without connecting anything? Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the new moon. And as always, I wish you clear skies.